بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعه إلى يوم الدين أما بعد respected ulama elders jamaa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh all praise is due to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our nourisher and our sustainer and our maintainer and our creator and the choicest peace blessings and salutations upon our beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon his companions upon his family and all those who strive to emulate his lifestyle till the end of time Alhamdulillah, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all the favors He had bestowed upon us for Islam, for Iman, for the big favors and for the ones that we might consider little ones. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase us in all that is good, to protect us from everything that is bad, and to grow us as an ummah, an ummah of Iman, an ummah of Taqwa. Ameen ya Rabbal Alameen. Uh, Pope Benedict, strange way to start the khutbah. Pope Benedict, uh, he stirred a huge controversy in September 2006. I don't know if you remember. Huge controversy. He was reiterating the old Christian accusations against the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam of having spread Islam by violence. Um, he, he devised a trick, he was actually quoting someone, so he, he, he didn't say it directly. Uh, so the Pope was giving a lecture at the University of Regensburg in Bavaria, and when he quoted the Byzantine Emperor Manuel II Paleologos, this is exclamation, and this is what that emperor had said. The emperor said, and I quote, Show me just what Muhammad brought that was new. And there you will find things only evil and inhuman, such as his command to spread by the sword the faith he preached. So this, this, is, the, this is the thing that the Pope quoted. And a Pope is supposed to be a responsible person. If this is what the Pope feels he can quote and he can say, because when, when Muslims the world over uh, or near unanimously they express their outrage at the remarks, the Pope and his supporters were like, uh, what are you on about? We, don't, we, we are unable to see the point. Because you see, there were, there's centuries of literature, there's centuries of, of writing where the narrative that was created about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by Christians that he was an imposter, billah, an antichrist, billah, a warmonger. This is centuries in the making. And it has become almost part and parcel of the Christian psyche. Not only of the Christian psyche, but other non-Muslims as well have bought into this, into this narrative have bought into this uh, uh, trendy narrative. But it's trendy now, but it's coming on centuries uh, ago. And uh, so, so the Pope didn't see, couldn't actually see the point. Why, why are you all up in arms? Uh, th this, is a, this is a big problem. My, myself being in da'wah, if you mention the name Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam amongst Muslims, alhamdulillah generates or generates respect. We say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In fact, Stingy is the person who after Muhammad Sallallahu name is mentioned, he can't even say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. To that extent, we are encouraged. We are encouraged to say, send salutations upon him because whomsoever sends salutations upon him, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will send uh, uh, rahmah and, and blessings upon such an individual as well. But if you say this word Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this name in a gathering of, of, of non-Muslims, then by and large, you're going to get a very mixed reaction. Islam, the word Islam, they can take. 
Almost like we can live with the word Islam, but if you mention the word Muhammad, then negative uh, uh, images are conjured up in their minds. Negative emotions. They, they don't know how, how to react. That's the man that's causing all of this. It's causing these problems. That's, that's inciting violence. That's why these Muslims are so fanatical. That's why they are so uh, right-wing. That's why they are so extreme. That, that is why they, 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 they always go to violence to solve their problems. They refer everything back to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So th they believe that this is where the, 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 the worldview of Muslims is what they believe what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had brought. And that's not our worldview. And it wasn't definitely... That was not Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That which they are saying about him, we know, we know it is absolutely untrue. So, it is important for us as Muslims to know what do we think about or how do we see the world? How are we supposed to be seeing the world? How do we see Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? What are we doing to make Non-Muslims realize how we see the world, how we really see the world, not how they think we see the world. How do we make non-Muslims realize who Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was? The true Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And to understand how Muslims view the world, we need to understand what the Prophet meant with the world. What was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's relationship with the dunya, what was the Prophet Sallallahu message about? What was his interaction with man? Then we will find, as Thomas Carlyle wrote, and I'm quoting the Pope first now, Thomas Carlyle, is this a sermon or a khutbah? Some might be thinking, don't worry, we'll get to the, to the uh, Islamic stuff. He wrote, the lies which well-meaning zeal has heaped around this man are disgraceful to ourselves only. Yeah, this is what he said. So let me say it again. The lies which well-meaning zeal has heaped around this man are disgraceful to ourselves only. He's talking about non-Muslim selves. I'm not talking about Muslims here. So we want this to come to light. This reality. This reality. This false narrative. This batil narrative that they got about Islam. They grow up with it. It's ingrained in them. They have to unlearn this about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They have to unlearn this ab about Muslims. And it's difficult to unlearn because this narrative is being re reinforced all the time by the media, by movies, sometimes even by Muslim action. Which is not uh, uh, Muslims which are acting but not in conformity with Islam. So how then uh, do Muslims view the world? Or how should Muslims view the world? By also by having regard for the great Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as their teacher. Not how do we view the world on our own. How do we view the world, how should we view the world as having this great Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as our ultimate teacher. I'm going to try and explain this by using the Meccan period of the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and some of the short surahs that were revealed during that time. So the Meccan period, what is the Meccan period? You understand and I understand the Meccan period to be after the Prophet ﷺ was visited by Jibreel in the cave and he got the first revelation of Iqra and then after that he, he, he opened up the Risala and the Da'wah to Islam and then the period of, of struggle came, the period of difficulty came where, where that he had to actually preach this, this message of Tawheed. This was the Meccan period. That period until finally the Prophet ﷺ undertook the Hijrah. This was an extremely difficult period for Islam, for the Prophet ﷺ, and for those who became Muslim. An extremely critical period. It's a period that sometimes we skim over because we rather want to focus on Medina and after Medina because that is the glory days. But how do you get to the glory days? There's something that you have to do to get to the glory days. So we are not necessarily in the glory days. We, it seems, are back to square one. We are back in the days of Jahiliyyah. We are back in the days where people have very skewed ways of looking at the world. 
where people have very weird ideas about a creator or God. You have a church called the Church of Scientology. You have people believing that we were put here by alien beings and that one day they will return, once we have evolved to a certain degree. You have all these weird types of things happening around you. New beliefs coming out all the time. Uh, then besides the beliefs, you have no belief. This idea of it's only this world and there's nothing else. The, the atheistic standpoint. And then you have people just doing as they wish. You have the anarchist. Then you have people who just don't care about anything. They don't care about belief. They don't care about disbelief or non-belief. All they care about is following themselves. They are gods. They made themselves gods. It is about them, what they want, what they can get, for how long they can get it. Subhanallah. Doesn't it sound like an age of jahiliyyah? Doesn't it sound like an age of ignorance? So the time has come again for Muslims to say that this is how you need to be seeing the world. The original da'wah needs to be put out again. The original message of Islam, we need to put it out there again for ourselves and for the benefit of the entire humanity. The odds are against us, but that cannot stop us from doing it. It cannot stop you. You have the truth on your side. So the Meccan period, we will look at some of the suwar, some of the famous suwar. When I say famous suwar, what do I mean? I mean the suwar, the short surahs that we usually recite in Maghrib Salah or in the Isha Salah, and, 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 you know, the short ones that many of us are familiar with. Power-packed suwar. I want to look at three themes that come out of this suwar. The first theme is, and through these three themes, inshallah, we will see this is how Muslims actually view the world. And this talk that I'm giving you now, it is, it is a talk that uh, a couple of weeks ago, parts of it, I've given to the medical students at the University of Stellenbosch, a non-Muslim crowd. And I think it helped them pretty well to understand how Muslims view the world. But the Muslims that were there, I think they appreciated it even more. So I thought, okay, then in that instance, this is something that you need to talk about in the masjid as well. So, one of the first things that, that we see, there are many themes. Number one, in Juz Amma, in that short surah, you are going to find many themes. You can spend months just on Juz Amma, doing a thematic uh, a tafsir of Juz Amma. You'll have a good time understanding, seeing how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is opening up the world and opening up an understanding of the world for you. And this is what we anchor after. We anchor after a correct understanding of the world. We want to see and understand things as they are, in the true sense, not as they are portrayed to us, or how some people want us to understand it. We see a common theme in, in this surah is the reversal of the order of things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for example, says in the Quran, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ إِذَا زُلْزِلَتِ الْأَرْضُ زِلْزَالَهَا When the earth is shaken to its utmost convulsions. There's a reversal of the order of things. Things which we come to know as permanent. Things which we come to know that, that it has longevity. We look at these things and they, they remind us, oh, that everything is okay. Every morning you wake up, the mountain is still there. Number one, the sun came up. Yeah, if you're riding around the coast, the sea, yeah, the waves is breaking. The tide might be a little bit because of the, of the southeaster. But other than that, everything is in order. Everything is in order. At night, if you look up, mashallah, the stars are there still. Dead people, where are they? Alhamdulillah. Allah is on Constancy, in Allah is on Thornton Road, in Allah is on Observatory. Alhamdulillah, everything as it should be. Dead people under the ground, living people on top of the ground, sky on top, mountains standing firm. And we can live happily ever after. <laughs> Isn't it? No. This is not the reality. This that we deem to be permanent, that we deem to be lasting, that we deem to be the things which we measure even our longevity by, it's not there forever. When the earth is going to convulse, the extent to which it can convulse. Imagine that. When the earth, this thing, earth, that you think is firm, that you think is the ground you're standing on, anything can shake, a ladder can shake, you stand on a chair, the chair can shake, but the very ground I stand on, it doesn't shake. 
It shouldn't shake. We build into this ground because this ground is so firm and steady. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says there's going to come a time where this ground is going to convulse the extent of which you have never ever seen. Another surah. When the sky, you look up, you see a beautiful blue sky. When the sky is rent and split asunder, it is cleft apart, it is torn apart. Subhanallah, can we imagine what that means even? We, we cannot even imagine what that means. In other words, إِذَا الشَّمْسُ كُوِّرَتْ when the, when the sun ceases to shine. We know now that the sun is a star. It can burn out. The fuel isn't going to last forever. إِذَا الشَّمْسُ كُوِّرَتْ When the sun finally loses its brightness. Allahu Akbar. وَإِذَا النُّجُومُ كَدْرَتْ That stars that you are watching, when that stars start to just fall. That starts, it just starts to disappear. وَإِذَا الْجِبَالُ سُيِّرَتْ When the mountains are, are سُيِّرَتْ They are just made to, 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 to blow away. They, are, they, they just blow away. Can you believe a table mountain just blowing away? The Himalayas just blowing away. Subhanallah. وَإِذَا الْعِشَارُ أُطِّلَتْ and these verses are being recited on the kuffar of Mecca, on the Quraysh of Mecca, the thick heads that doesn't want to realize the wahdaniyya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the thick heads that were believing that everything lasts forever, the thick heads that were believing that if you die, then everything it's lights out, there's nothing after that. These are the verses that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was utilizing these wild people, these tribalized people, these asabiyya people. These people, these headstrong people, this argumentative people, this warmongering people, this people that love the dunya type of a people. These are the verses that is being revealed to them. Powerful verses. وَإِذَا الْعِشَارُ أُطِّلَتْ وَإِذَا الْوُحُوشُ حُشِرَتْ And it goes on. When the she-camel, is, the, the pregnant she-camel is left. وَإِذَا الْوُحُوشُ When the beasts, wild beasts, when they are all gathered together. Wild beasts, they don't gather, you don't gather them all together. وَإِذَا الْبِحَارُ سُجِّرَتْ You look at the ocean and then suddenly the ocean starts to boil. There's a total ontological reversal of the natural order of things. وَإِذَا الْقُبُورُ بُعْثِرَتْ In another verse. When the people who are laying in their graves, the graves is going to spit out and put on top what is supposed to be under. Allahu Akbar. Subhanallah. See the power of the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the tongue of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to a society steeped in a worldview that is skew. This is how you view the world. This is how Muslims see the world. They see the world as something that comes to an end. And not only do we say it comes to an end, the Quran gives in vivid description, a vivid description of just how it will come to an end. It is not permanent. That which is permanent and used to show signs of stability, now it is utterly destroyed. So the lesson is that the temporal nature, or the temporal nature rather of this dunya is foregrounded. The Muslim worldview, the one who accepts Islam, accepts this message. He accepts the message that the dunya is of a temporary nature. I look at everything as if they are permanent, but me, along with everything else, and Bill Gates, all of us, and Windows, and iPhones, everyone, and Mercedes Benzes, everyone, and the crayfish and the prawns, everything, it will come to an end. It will come to an end. And the Quraysh, they are warned that there will come a time where this reality is going to hit you. If this reality isn't hitting you now, there's going to be a time that this reality is going to hit you. And when you're going to see it with your own eyes, and then it hits you, it's going to be too late. It's going to be too late. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, بَلْ تُؤْثِرُونَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا But you prefer this worldly life. وَالْآخِرَةُ خَيْرُ وَأَبَقَى And the year after, it is better, and it is everlasting. If the year after is better, then it means that this is Less better, isn't it? 
This might be okay, but it is not the best. There is something better. If the year after is abaqa is permanent, and then it means that this is temporal. So this is how Muslims see the world. This is how Muslims view the world. We look at the world as something of a temporary thing. We look at the world as something that we don't love. Umar radiallahu anhu walks into the, to the house of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and he starts to cry. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa asking, what's making you cry? He says, I see nothing in your household, ya Rasulullah. I see nothing of what, I, of what the leaders of other nations have in their homes. I see nothing of that in your home. No soft beds, no couches, nothing, nothing. No furnishings, nothing in your home. The Prophet ﷺ reminds Umar, Ya Umar, it is not for the dunya that we are working. Because the akhirah, it is much, much better. It is for the akhirah that we are working. This is a prophet of Allah. He does his work not for the dunya. And this is, the, this is our teacher. This is our teacher. And who are we? We are the teachers of mankind. When we go out there, we teach. We don't protest. We teach them how to do things. We teach them about justice. We teach them about feeding the poor. We don't just show them. We are teachers. And we have the best teacher. That's why we can be good teachers. We are the khulafa. We are the inheritors. We are the rightful heirs of this deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we say, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. This is our worldview. This is how we see the world. And we are not an elitist club. We invite to this way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second thing, a focus on, on internal development. If you look at these surahs, there's a focus on internal development. Suddenly, that which is considered mundane, that which is considered insignificant, uninspiring, is shown as the truer qualities which is worth developing. So the Quran suddenly, فَمَن يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَى وَمَن يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًّا يَرَى Suddenly, if you do an atom's weight of good, you're going to see it. Huh? We thought it's just a big stuff. You have to make a bold statement, go big or go home. Isn't it? Go big or go home. No. فَمَن يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَى do an atom's weight of good, you will see it. Suddenly, smiling at your brother becomes an act of charity. Suddenly, taking a stone out of the road. I saw a Bhutanada the other day there in Slant Fontaine Road. He took a stone out of the road. He stopped his car, stopped, took the stone, put it in, and then rode on. Allahu Akbar. They're still good people. <laughs> I hope he was Muslim because he didn't got the reward for the hadith. If he was non Muslim, he needed da'wah, inshallah. Small things become big things. Small things become big things. This is the Quran. So, uh, similarly, so, so, so spending in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now uh, is, is righteousness. Yes, spending is, is righteousness. Honor is developing consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Honor is no longer something that we think honor to be. Oh, yes, the honorable, like Viti Vini Vini. Uh -uh. No, suddenly honor is developing consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you don't have the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how honorable can you really be? But we throw around this title, the honorable Iqbitivini, every now and then. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna akramakum indallahi atqaakum. The best of you in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most honorable of you in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is those who have the most consciousness of Him. So it seems like a small thing. Huh? You mean it's that easy? All I have to do is I have to try to develop consciousness of Allah and then I become of the best of humanity? I don't have to become a judge to be called the honorable? Ni? You can be the honorable. We may be not going to call you the honorable. <laughs> but you can become the honorable. Whoever. So there's a focus on this in the Quran. Then, then lastly, there's a focus on, on social justice. So the Quran, number one, it speaks about a reversal of the order of things, which gives us the lesson of the temporal nature of the dunya. Number two, I took out the theme of a focus on the internal development. It speaks about that, about this internal development. Number three, a focus on social justice. A focus on social just justice. The Quran says, وَمَا أَدَرَاكَ مَا الْعَقَبَةِ Oh, I'm, I'm just quoting mostly from the, the short surah at the end. 
وما أدراك ما العقبة. What is going to make you know what the steep path is? What is going to make you know what Aqaba is? And then it tells. Oh, okay, before I go there, social justice is a new word. But justice in Islam is a term we know. Inna Allah yuhibbu al-muqsitin. Very Allah subhanahu wa taala loves those who are just. Idilu, be just. Wa aqrabu taqwa It is closer to taqwa. Don't let your enmity over people and your hatred over people cause you to be unjust. Be just. The Quran says. And there are many, many verses uh, extolling the virtues of justice and how important justice is for Muslims. But then in this, these surah that the Prophet ﷺ is reading unto the Quraysh, because they don't have an understanding of justice. They don't have an understanding. They, kill, they were killing one another, chopping one another up for stupid reasons. For stupid reasons they were fighting. They were punishing for all the wrong reasons. They were letting people live for the wrong reasons. There wasn't a sense of justice. There wasn't a sense of the proper order of things. And this is where, where the Quran came in. Also the second one that I mentioned. There wasn't an understanding on internal development. They didn't understand what it meant to be, to be, to be honorable. They didn't understand what it meant that, that a small act of kindness was actually a big thing in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They didn't understand that. They didn't understand that just giving someone something because you want to please Allah is going to make you big by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They wanted to give in front of man so that they could be big in front of man because they thought they would live on after they die. They would, they would live on in the stories that men would tell about them. This is what they thought. This is the only way they would live. So their generosity was a misplaced generosity. Their kindness was a misplaced kindness. Their sense of honor was misplaced, it was misguided. Much like today. The people have a warped understanding of what it is to be kind, to be honorable, to be dignified. A warped understanding. And then the people who are strange, they don't appear strange. And the people who are not strange, they appear to be strange. And the prophet says, we walk into engine now the other day, we were in Khrabo with some of the kids, and then myself and, 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 and one of we walked into the engine to go buy something. And then this, this lady walks past, and uh, uh, he is a uh, purple, a punk rocker, gothic, you know, goth look. <laughs> the, the youngsters are left. There's all goth punk rock thing she got going with, uh, uh, with purple here. Eh? And we look at one another and we say, I'm here. Can you mean sir? I'm sure. And then this, this is grown and this is shaved. And this is a woman and then this is long. So it's strange for us. Now she is going to the engine one stop and we also going into the engine one stop with our kurtas. Everyone in the engine cake for our muscle cake for Osan. <laughs> yeah, we, we, were, we were stranger than that even. Fatuba <laughs> lil Glad tidings says the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the strangers. This is the time, you know, it's, it's weird. Yeah, what's supposed to be strange is not strange, and, and what's supposed to be not strange is very strange. You know? So, this verse is speaking then of, of justice, and then in the, in the, in the 30th Jews, it gets placed out a little bit easier for you. It gets told to the Quraysh, and not only to the Quraysh, when we are making this ayahs عام. وَمَا أَدَرَاكَ مَا الْعَقَبَةَ What is going to make you know what aqaba is? فَكُّ رَقَبَةَ it is setting free or paying for the, uh, the, the ransom of a slave. Setting free a slave. Oh, it is feeding. Yeah, social justice. That's claw monga mensa. Feed on the day of famine. It is feeding a person on that day where it is difficult to feed when there's no food. But you got food. You feed on that day. We don't only think we are temporal beings. We don't only think of ourselves and want to develop ourselves inwardly. We think of others. This is how Muslims see the world. We think of others as well. We don't only think, okay, akhirat is lekan jannah, lekas karal dan yaronta. No, we realize that you earn jannah. And the way to earn it is through these activities. Yatim and the maqraba. Then specifically, the marginalized, the orphan. The orphan first was close to your family. The orphan relative. Not the orphan stranger. The orphan relative. There's maybe a sister in your family, an aunt in your family, some, somewhere connected a cousin in your family. Her husband died. 
There isn't people to help her. You looking out for her. You looking out for that yatim. Yatim and the maqraba. The Quran says first that one. First the orphan that is related to you. Then, O miskin and the matraba. Or a, a poor person, a needy person that is in distress. He's in distress. How do you know he's in distress? You see, you just by looking at him, he's got dust all over him. He's, you, you can see, no, this man is definitely down and out. He's got nothing. He's not trying. He's not coming to my house and a professional beggar. No, no. He's down and out. His clothes are torn. He's laying in the pavement. Assist him. In another verse, فَأَمَّ الْيَتِيمَ فَلَا تَقْهَرُ Isn't it? As for the orphan, don't repel them, don't chase them away. In another verse, فَأَمَّا مَنْ أَعْطَى وَاتَّقَى As for the one who gives and he has taqwa وَصَدَّقَ بِالْحُسْنَى And he does charity in a good way. فَسَنُيَسِّرُهُ لِلْيُسْرَى Soon we will make the path of good easy for him. وَأَمَّا مَنْ بَخِلَى As for the stingy one, وَاسْتَغْنَى And the one who deems himself independent of Allah. فَسَنُيَسِّرُهُ لِلْعُسْرَى We will make the path of evil good for him. Or, or easy for him rather. So this sense of doing. And not only doing for ourselves, but doing for others. Muslims, you know, and, and this, is the, this is the part of the khutbah where we don't only look at our worldview now, but where we start to develop, a, 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 we, we build onto the worldview. Because we're living in a different age. So we also need to build things onto it. And as Muslims living here in South Africa, we need to build onto it that we need to interact wider than only our own interest. I'm not saying we mustn't look at our own interest. We must look at our own interest. We must see if the food is halal. We must worry about the hajj. We must worry. But we can't worry about these things all the time. Only the things that affect us. This wasn't the way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is not the way of social justice. You don't only look at what concerns you. Because if you do that, you make yourself a gang. And the way of the gang is the way of uh, uh, extinction. Because you're not adapting. You're not adapting to your environment. You're becoming a gang. You're becoming a clique. Cliques die. Gangs die out. We need to understand how to survive in this environment. And how to not only survive, we need to understand how to thrive as Muslims in this environment. And how to bring more people on board. And the only way we are going to start doing that is if we create a, 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 the vision that's like this now for our own. For our own affairs, we create a vision that's like that. And start to think about the affairs of the wider community. And we need people of taqwa to be looking at the affairs of the wider community. We've got the strange dichotomy that if you are not involved in deen, then you will be involved in the social justice of other people. Hmm? What's that? But if you're a muttaqi person, then you're involved only with Muslims. No. If you're a muttaqi person and you fear Allah and you're on the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you will worry about the Muslim and you will worry about the non-Muslim because Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent rahmatun lil alameen. You will take an interest in this decaying country. And you will start to worry about what the, what the reasons are that this country is going slipping into moral decay. And you're, you're, going to, you're going to worry about your children, not only your children, your neighbor's children, whether they're Muslim or non-Muslim. And you're going to start trying to provide answers, and you're going to start to try to become part of the solution. And this is the Muslim worldview. We will stop here, inshallah ta'ala. This is how we see the world, at least one way that we see the world, besides our, our, our tawheed. Besides, I'll be leaving in the Risala of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I'll cover that. We believe in the temporal nature of this world. And that, that engenders in us a specific way that we interact with this world. We interact with this world as, as if it is temporary. We live in this world as if we are travelers. We don't set ourselves up in a permanent way. We worry about our final destination. We are worried about that. And we interact with the world in that way. And we know there's going to come a day of reality. There's going to come a day of a true reality. We don't want to realize on that day. We are of those who realize now. And we are of those who give the message of this realization to others now. Because the world more now than at any other time is in need of this message of Islam. We were sent as teachers. Said the Prophet ﷺ, I was sent as a teacher, and you all Muslims, you sent as teachers. Go out and teach them. Go out and teach them. We can't just go out and shout and sloganize and protest. We are teachers. Go teach. 
Go teach them what? Go teach them this beautiful deen of Islam. Go give them the solutions. Don't sit on it. And not only in our Muslim community, outside. We said also our, our worldview is based on focus. There's a focus on internal development. We are worried about ourselves here. We are worried about the small things in life. We are worried about developing ourselves here, about our qalb. We are worried about that. We are worried about our ruh. We are worried about whether we are good people in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّى Success for us isn't dunya. Success is if you have succeeded in purifying your soul. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ Indeed, he succeeded who purified his soul. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّى Allahu Akbar. This is, how, this is how we see the world. We look at ourselves and we worry about how others are internally. We don't just look at them on the outside. We worry about the internal condition of individuals and of nations. And if we look at the internal condition of this nation, the South African nation, then we must worry because it is looking very sick and it is looking very bleak. Very sick and very bleak. But who's the teachers? The teachers aren't teaching. The teachers who are qualified to teach. The teachers who have the right message, they're not doing their work. They're not giving the proper worldview over. They're not doing the da'wah. And this is the da'wah. The last thing that we are saying is a focus on social justice. Let's, let's have a focus on justice. Adil, we need to love it. We need to love it for our, for our own sake and the sake uh, of our children. We need to love it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we know that the ultimate one, that the ahkamul hakimin is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he will hold us accountable according to the level and the extent of our justice. Wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Shukran.